In Zimbabwe today, millions voted in parliamentary and presidential elections. The two front runners are familiar faces, longtime opposition figure and current Prime Minister Morgan Changarai and Robert Mugabe, 89 years old, in power for 33. Last election, he held on to power with violence and vote rigging. And while today was peaceful, already Zimbabweans inside and outside the country are disputing the fairness of the election. The CBC's Nala Ayed has more. The sounds of home come easily to these Zimbabweans, even in London. But in the vote underway back home, their voices are absent. Just one of the shortcomings of what they call a sham vote, a wasted opportunity for change. Change doesn't come in a day, you know, it certainly doesn't come in a month. And the way things have happened in Zimbabwe, it's going to take years to repair what has been lost. At home, many are just as skeptical. But they came to vote early and in huge numbers to try again to demand change. I hope this is creating a brighter tomorrow for me, he says. Zimbabwe managed to get through the day peacefully, even as it considered whether to choose someone other than Robert Mugabe as president. At 89, he shows no intention of letting go, though yesterday he claimed he would accept defeat. If you lose, then you, you must surrender to those who have won. If you win, those who have lost must also surrender to you. And this is it. But last time, Mugabe did not surrender, ignoring his loss and insisting on a runoff in which he ran alone. Then violently cracked down on the opposition. Mugabe and his main challenger were eventually forced to share power. Go, Mugabe, it's over! But Morgan Changer, I cautioned Mugabe won't just walk away. Don't, don't believe that. He doesn't believe in the right of the people to choose. He doesn't believe that he can actually be voted out of office. And the only language the imperialists understood was that of the bullet. Mugabe has ruled violently and with impunity, fiercely anti-Western and backed by a powerful military, army generals who have blood on their hands and a hand in the election's outcome, yes. says this newspaper editor. They're terrified what will happen to them after Mugabe is gone, and they want to keep him there for their safety. And so a lot will depend on which way they jump. The opposition already accuses Mugabe of rigging the voters list, of leaving out most eligible young voters altogether. This longtime observer is still mostly optimistic. It's going to be free-ish, it's going to be fair-ish, but it's got to be credible. Uh, so I think it's going to be partial, imperfect, messy, but I think it'll be a good enough result. A hard sell at Zimbabwe House in London, where the only ballot box is a stuffed one. Sally Mutsuyami's family fled to the UK when she was a child. All I've known is Mugabe's in been in power, to be honest. And uh, I just believe that when it's your time to go, you should go. They sing for the millions forced to leave their homes against their will. Many of them say they will return at any hint of real change. Nalaya at CBC News, London. Decades ago, Robert Mugabe was one of the most celebrated leaders in Africa, a national hero whose rise brought Zimbabwe out of its colonial past. And he's clung to that image and to power ever since. The predominant feeling among the Europeans of Central Africa is that time is running out. In the 1960s, CBC's Morley Safer told the story of a Zimbabwe known then as Rhodesia. Under white minority rule, facing a growing independence movement, Robert Mugabe was at the forefront. We are at the moment struggling to earn for our people one man, one vote. Mistrusted as a guerrilla fighter in the 70s, by the time he swept to power in 1980, both the country and Mugabe had undergone a remarkable transformation in the world's eyes. Yesterday you hated me. Today you cannot avoid the love. Under his leadership, initially, Zimbabwe flourished. Literacy rates and food production grew. Fears of racial antagonism seemed overblown. The white man, to a very large extent, believed that Mr. Mugabe was the most evil thing that could happen to this country. And I think it has been an extremely pleasant surprise 
to all of us to find that he's nothing like that at all. Mugabe didn't sound like an autocrat. Criticism which is constructive must be welcome to any government. I can assure you that uh, I am for criticism. And even while he crushed dissent and sidelined political rivals, he managed to earn international accolades, an honorary knighthood, a pat on the back from Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. In 2000, Mugabe fast-tracked land reform. Land reform became a matter of violent, often deadly seizures of farms owned by whites. I was arrested and um, thrown in jail and managed to get out and was given 36 hours to vacate the farm. Production fell, the economy collapsed, inflation soared into the triple digits. Mugabe's rule was wearing thin. Opposition figure Morgan Shangarai was gaining traction in elections. We've moved from a bread basket to basket cake. Mugabe hated the thought of losing power, hated it so much he turned to intimidation. <laughs> Violence, murders, vote rigging. Mugabe the savior became Mugabe the villain. He's hung on for three decades, has groomed no one to take over. His countrymen know what he's capable of doing to stay in control, which makes this election an exercise in hope and fear.